Also, a note on this idea of personalization, whether it's really heavily personalized with a specific message, whether you give it to them or otherwise, or if it's personalized just with your name. These are going to be very difficult to resell on places like eBay because if you wanted to sell them, the person who's buying them, unless they've got your name, will not necessarily want to have that in their collection because it'll be very obvious it wasn't them who got it signed. It'll be personalized to somebody else. That has turned me off several times to buying signed stuff on eBay. There's a great Clone Wars poster that's been up on eBay for ages signed by Ashley Eckstein. And for some reason, I guess because the Ahsoka character is now a new big thing, I actually would like to have an Ashley Eckstein signed something, poster or otherwise. But it's personalized to somebody else, and I'm not going to buy a poster that's personalized to somebody else. Some people are fine with it. Most autograph collectors, at least Star Wars autograph collectors that I know, are not fine with it. So if you get it personalized, understand you're probably going to be keeping it, not going to be giving it away or selling it. Then again, if you're watching this, you're probably doing it for a collecting purpose, so you wouldn't be wanting to get rid of it anyway. Now, I've mentioned eBay a couple of times. One of the things that you can do is avoid doing any kind of pre-order signed items or canned signed items like through StarWarsShop.com and find ones that have been hand signed, just not with you present. Usually the best place to do that is a place like eBay, but be forewarned here that a lot of times what you'll find is people faking signatures. Not so much with novels and comics. I found that with Star Wars novels, Star Wars comics, it's very rare to have somebody try to fake a signature. If you're looking for other signed Star Wars stuff, though, or other signed celebrity stuff, be very careful. Tons and tons of faked signatures, forged signatures, or signatures where they just signed a name that really looks nothing like the person's signature at all. Natalie Portman is a perfect example of this. Tons and tons of forged or false Natalie Portman signatures on Star Wars stuff on eBay. She doesn't tend to sign Star Wars stuff very much, and she has a very distinctive autograph. But if you've never seen it, it's very easy to get bamboozled on eBay. Now, speaking of this whole idea of eBay stuff, getting stuff signed by others, again, a couple of different approaches you could take. One of the things that I hunted down after getting that Revenge of the Sith was I said, I want the first modern EU novel in its first printing signed by its author. The same thing for the first modern EU comic, dang it, from 1991. I want those. And I hunted them down. So here, a first edition hardback copy of Heir to the Empire, in this case, signed by, no big surprise, Timothy Zahn. Right there, if I can angle this correctly here for you. Now, in this case, you notice it's just the signature. Again, be careful. Not necessarily every seller who's selling something signed is going to show you a picture of the signature. This person showed a picture of it. A lot of times, I've seen something listed as just signed, and I've wound up trying to be careful, as in the case with some signed Kevin J. Anderson stuff that I saw, and I will email the person selling it to see, is it just, pers or is it just the signature, or is it personalized to somebody? Every single time I've actually taken the time to email someone, I wound up finding out, oh, it's personalized to somebody. That's why they didn't show a picture. They thought it would turn people off. Well, it's a good thing I didn't buy it, or I would have been pissed. Wouldn't you? So, be careful about it. Look for a picture. If there's not a picture, email either asking for one or at least asking point blank for information about the item. In this case, an item that was signed personally by Timothy Zahn, but not in my presence with no personalization. Another thing that you can find is that some people who sell signed items will go to great lengths, especially bookstores, uh, small booksellers who sell autograph stuff, will go to great lengths to build up the value of an item. And sometimes that involves book plates. Sometimes you'll find that bookstores that can't travel with huge amounts of books with them to have them signed by celebrities at major events will instead sometimes take little book plates with them, just the little stickers get those signed and then place them in the books. And in doing so, you wind up with a signed book where the book itself wasn't present for the signing. A good example of this is my signed first edition of the Attack of the Clones novel. Remember, I have never seen one of those slipcase limited editions for Attack of the Clones. I'm not even sure if it exists. So instead, I hunted down something like this just to make, make it so that I had them all signed when it came to the prequel trilogy at least. So you open it up. And here's a pair of book plates, signed by R.A. Salvatore, 
the author, and Aiden Christensen, who plays, of course, Anakin Skywalker slash Darth Vader. Book plates, not quite as nice as if the item itself had been signed, but again, a way to get multiple signatures on a book and a way for booksellers to increase the value of their books. Again, if you don't like book plates, email and ask, because I did ask them for sure to make sure whether this was book plates or otherwise. Glad I asked. I still bought it anyway, but it would have been annoying if I had ordered this only to realize after the fact they were book plates not hand signed on the book itself. Personally, I don't have an issue with it. Book plates are a good way to go. In fact, in some cases, it'll let you get signatures when you otherwise perhaps wouldn't or couldn't. A good example of this is actually a book that I have that's, or a book series I have that's not Star Wars, but it's by a Star Wars author. Kevin J. Anderson has written this really, really good sci-fi series called The Saga of Seven Sons. There's seven books to it, plus a graphic novel that acts as sort of a prequel. This is the last book, The Ashes of Worlds. Some of the books I've got hand-signed by Kevin, and others I have wound up getting signed book plates for. Now, what I was able to do in this case was I never got any of these book plates from Kevin in person, but I got them directly from him because what he will do is sign some book plates and he'll just mail the things out. Also, if you're someone who wants to have something signed and you want to mail it away to somebody, one thing that you can do instead of mailing away the item, which is something we'll touch on later, is mail the personality a sticker and have them sign it. You've just created your own book plate, so when they send it back, you can take it off, put it right into your book. Works very, very well. As another example, don't forget, if you get stuff signed in person, like I did with some of these items, one issue, of course, is personalization versus just having them sign something. I think I pointed this out before. I'm going to show you another couple of examples of that type of idea here. The Approaching Storm, signed by Alan Dean Foster. In that case, just signed right there, not personalized. The first Star Wars book I actually ever got signed, I believe, was The New Rebellion. It's back when I was living in Evansville, Indiana, and Christine Catherine Rush actually came to the local, I think it was either Walden Books or B. Dalton, and was signing books. So The New Rebellion, in this case, signed in person, way back when, says, uh, To Nathan, may the force and all that good stuff be with you, signed, Christine Catherine Rush. So, again, if you are going to get something signed in person, again, personalized versus not. Easier to resale stuff that's not, but if you want to get something for your collection that is very specific to you, get it personalized. Another thing you might want to get signed if you're a Star Wars EU collector is Star Wars comics. There's a couple different ways you can go about doing this. For example, you could have someone, whoever it is you're trying to get it signed by, do a signing on the inside, like in this case of Splinter of the Mind's Eye, number one. It's based on a novel by Alan Dean Foster, so when I met Alan Dean Foster, I had him sign it, sign right here. Again, try to aim this for you. Right there on the inside, down there at the bottom. Of course, the thing about signing it on the inside is that when it's in a bag with a board, which hopefully is the way you're keeping the comics to keep them pristine, you're not going to be able to see it. So, usually, people will have comics signed on the cover, as in the example of, say, this Dark Empire. Remember I said I was looking for the first EU novel and first EU comic in the modern EU from 1991 in their first edition form signed? This is the other example of that. Heir to the Empire was one, Dark Empire here is the other. This is Dark Empire, signed by cover artist Dave Dorman down here, signed by writer Tom Beach right there on the side. Now, in this case, it's got an artist and a writer signing together on the cover. Say you're into a series, though, and you don't run into both of those in the same place. What often happens is people will simply have the author or the artist do signings on different comics and then put them within the same collection, and to them, that completes that trifecta, or that, whatever you want to call it, that completionist urge. It gets not a trifecta unless there's three. I do have an example of that here in just a second. So in this case... We had cover artist and writer signing on the cover. As for an example of separate, this is Legacy Number 1, the one for one dollar thing from Dark Horse, signed by Jan Dersima, right there on the side, the artist for the interior. Then this is a copy of Legacy Number 0, signed by John Ostrander. Artist, writer, 
separate comics as opposed to one together. For many people, that's fine. In fact, it increases the number of signed things and the likelihood of getting signed things because you're not looking for one by the entire creative team. This one also presents an interesting example of something else that you can find in that just like with novels, you'll find novels that are limited editions numbered with signatures, often with a certificate of authenticity or something built into the book that is essentially in the, a certificate excuse me, of authenticity. You'll find some companies like Dynamic Forces and others will put out signed comics that are special limited editions and when you have those usually they'll be in a package with some type of holographic special seal and some type of certificate of authenticity as we have here with a legacy number zero signed by John Ostrander. Another way to go about getting something signed for a comic collector when you don't have a comic to get signed is that a lot of times comic book companies will put out little items that are meant to be there for promotional purposes. Little cards or little one sheets, little posters, little advertisements, oftentimes tying into a specific comic series that you could get and put with your comic collection. Maybe get it and stick it in a bag and board with that comic. One example of this for me is this is Tales of the Jedi Redemption number one's cover on a little card. Here's the actual comic right here. Well, this is signed on the reverse by Kevin J. Anderson. This isn't signed, but the card is, and the card is directly related to the comic. So for me, for my collection, I put this in a bag and board, put this in there with it, and to me, that is a signed item. Think of it as the equivalent for comics of a book plate, but a lot of times comics don't have a place to put a sticker that's signed without marring some of the artwork. Here, you have the next best thing something you can put inside the bag and board with it without messing up the issue itself. Nice trade-off. 